Hi everyone, thanks for being here today. I'm so excited to be talking about a few different gift sets from e.l.f. that I found on their website. I got them through um, Loyalty Access. Like you'll see if you are browsing and you look at the holiday gifts section, you'll see a little Loyalty Access lock on some of these. You can look at them, but like I've purchased quite a bit from e.l.f.'s website over the years, so I, I didn't wasn't even sure I was part of that, but I guess I am because I was able to buy these things. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be set that way, but I. I chose three different holiday products and I thought I'd try them on and talk about them today. So I have absolutely nothing on my face right now because one of the things I chose was this Holy Hydration Set. It says under the mistletoe um, moisturizing kit. Take the little top off here. You're getting these hydrating booster drops, which I don't think I have any experience with those. This hydrating face prime on the go, which I don't think I've used that either. But then it looks like a Holy Hydration face cream only they're calling it Hello Hydration. What's going on there? I'll be able to tell you if that is indeed Holy Hydration. But I love the entire Holy Hydration line, so I thought this whole set might interest me. Um, the overall cost for it is $16. On the picture, it calls these Holy Hydration Booster Drops, and it definitely has the Holy Hydration logo and name on the face cream, too. I'm not sure why that looks a little different on what I actually received, and they're calling these Hydrating Booster Drops, but I'm going to use this as my serum today so like I said I have absolutely nothing on my face um, wait a minute is that right is there is this only half full it's only coming up to here <laughs> like I didn't suck that much up in the dropper did I I don't know gang mm, it does feel good it feels a lot like my hyaluronic serum from Glossier actually I'm just a little concerned that you take the dropper out, and I mean, even with the dropper in, that thing is half full. Don't go skimpy on us, Elf. They are charging $16 for this set. They're not completely giving it away, are they? So I've got that serum all over. I do feel as hydrated as I would expect something like this to make me feel. Let's make sure we're getting true holy hydration here in this Hello Hydration face cream. Okay, there it is. All right, yeah, <laughs> that's what I use every single night, but today I'm using it in the morning. <laughs> really rich, surprisingly rich face cream. You know, that's what I first thought when I used it for the first time. I was thinking, oh, it's, it's going to be hydrating, but it's probably going to be one of those things that just melts down and doesn't feel thick and rich. It has a really nice texture, and I think normal to dry skin would just eat this stuff up. I love it. I paired this with Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. Um, they are on two different ends of the cost spectrum, but they work together really nicely. I do that at nighttime, but now I'm I'm all hydrated and y'all I built a sandbox yesterday so I'm like I've never been this sore because <laughs> I also carried the sand up bub after our crazy weekend of um, trunk or treat which if you saw the pictures on Instagram you know what he dressed up as he was like this cheesy football 80s 90s crazy referee and in the night I think it was something he ate he threw up like not in the sense of having the flu and sitting around with the chills and all that stuff, but just a complete out of the blue like Ugh. There was something in his system that had to get out. He didn't eat anything from the trunk or treat concession stand, but I had packed him like a deli wrap in my little cooler bag that I brought because I knew with the setup time and the time of the event, there wouldn't be time to like go out and eat something and our van is obviously occupied uh, with the trunk and the treat. So I had packed the kids some Lunchables in there and I had like a chicken salad sandwich, one of those that's like kind of like gas station style that's completely sealed up. And then his was more like deli made, not maybe so sealed up, but I remembered thinking when I got the stuff out, I thought this doesn't feel very cold in here and I didn't have maybe enough cold packs going on. I don't know if something went bad with that, but that was like the only thing he ate. He ate that wrap and he didn't have time to go like eat anything else. He was doing his football thing the whole night. That I think would have to be what it was. But anyway, for Bubba's birthday, his big thing that he was getting is this sandbox and we put it off till Sunday. His birthday was on Saturday and um, Bubba was just going to get up in the morning, assemble that, fill it with sand, and then Bubba was going to come out and see this amazing sandbox. And now Bub's out of the picture and what are we going to do about the sandbox? And I didn't want bub doing this because I wanted him to you know feel better at that point in time like it was early in the morning he was still like just like he was not going to be having any part in this he was down in the basement just like off by himself so I get out all the pieces and I'm like this doesn't look bad I think it just snaps together no it snaps and it screws together and it, there aren't actually holes it says apply pressure 
and I'm like, what the heck? I don't know what I'm doing. I, I literally texted him, there's, there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to get this put together. And then for some reason, we went outside to play, and Bubba's kicking around in, the, in this area where we have some just dirt. And I'm like, doggone it, I'm building that sandbox. I don't care. You know, I've always told the girls, sometimes, you know, we'll be doing stuff and be like, it's too hard. And I'll say, you can do hard things. And I told myself, you can do hard things. You're building this. You can do it. It's, there's nothing that says you have to have a law degree and be a fantastic carpenter to put this thing together. So I did it, but I'm like super sore, partly because like I figured out if you get this sandbox, you gotta kind of hammer the screw in for a little bit to give it some traction and then crank it in. So the cranking will hurt your forearm a lot the next day and your shoulder and everything. And then when you have to carry your 50 pound bags of sand, which there are four of those that hold a total of 200 pounds, you're gonna carry those bags up from your husband's truck up some stairs because like our outdoor area is kind of up through some steps and some landscaping. I carried them a long way over my shoulder. <laughs> One of them was leaking sand up the whole way. Then dumping them in. Whew. I haven't woken up this sore since my cheerleading days. You guys are like, thank you so much, but please continue to tell us about the things we came here for. But the kids were playing outside the entire time I was making that, and I was like making a big deal about like, you know, five screws left. Very proud of myself that I just freaking did it. It's not my area. And then I was like, Bub, I'm tired of being you today. Bubba comes to me and he, he took his toy drill and he, um, was playing with that in the sandbox. And it's not like electric, but it is kind of mechanical. There's like gears on the inside. He was playing with that in the sandbox. Somehow sand gets in the drill and it won't, the button won't push anymore. So what do I do? I unscrew the entire drill. I take out the gears. I tap off the sand, put it back together and it worked. That's me being bub for a day. Hydrating face prime on the go. I'm thinking, please don't be like mint melt. Whoa, it's like, all right. We had a little bit of juice come out that wasn't quite incorporated, but overall, I think this is going to be good. Oh, oh my word, that feels good. It's like it's hanging together, but it is providing hydration. There's a certain amount of slip, but it's a slip with some thickness. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. I like that. We're going to see how my foundation stuff applies on top of this, but right at this time, my skin feels juicy, moisturized. That primer really is doing something. You need the hydrating stuff. I feel like this kit is good. Oh, serum almost fell out on the kitten. This is the troublemaker here. It looks half full. Hopefully not everyone's would be that way, and you should, if you see this out in a store, you should be able to tell. Like, you, you can look at it, and I think you can see if it's half full. I think that's unfair. I, that's not cool. But this is a healthy amount to be able to try Holy Hydration. To be able to give it a shot and see what you think about it, that's a nice amount to maybe try it for the first time. And then this hydrating face primer feels really, really nice. So all in all, I give this a thumb up. I'm only torn from giving it two thumbs up because I, I think that's a little suspect there. Okay, she's coming back to life slowly but surely. What I have since put on since those kind of priming steps, my Camo CC Cream, which I wear in the shade Light 210N, um, in the Spirit of Elf also, I've got on my um, Camo Concealer, the hydrating version, which I wear in Light Peach, and then I've got my Halo Glow in the Light Pink shade setting everything. Well, setting mainly the T-zone and under eye. Now the next thing Thing is going to encompass quite a few face steps. I got this Simply Enchanted face palette. It came in a little box like this. It seems like they usually put out a palette that's th about this size of face products. They say there's two highlighters, two bronzers, two shimmer blushes, two matte blushes in this palette. This one's got a very slight shimmer. Those are the two shimmers. These must be the two matte blushes. I don't know what I tried this on Biddy yesterday because I needed a fresh, unused cheek, <laughs> and I was like, how is this supposed to show? It's just so yellowy. I'm not sure about that. Then we've got bronzers, um, I would say here and here, and then these two could be your highlighters, slash light shimmery bronzer even possibly on that one. So we're going to use this today. I'm going to begin with the lightest shade of bronzer. It looks kind of like a, maybe it could be a soft contour. I'm going to see if this will show. I've experimented with the blushes in this, but not really everything on a fresh face like this. More building. Okay, I am seeing that a little bit. This light shade, kind of deceptively dark when you build it. A light amount doesn't look super dark, but it will come to play. All right. 
Will it show up here? See, the hollow of the cheek almost helps it show because there's a natural area where it's receding just a bit. And then up here, sometimes stuff that shows well in the hollow of your cheek as a contour, yeah, is a little less pronounced up there. So I'm going to go to the slightly deeper bronzer right here. And this is matte. Let's see what shows. I feel like I'm seeing a little more color now. Um, the texture of these powders, it seems soft. There were some blushes that I was dipping into yesterday where I was like, whoa, watch out. Like, they're really soft. But the tones overall, honestly, so light. This is a $10 palette. I know they're not charging a lot, but like, would it kill them to make a deep option? I'm building up some of the deeper tone of bronzer so I can see it. It does need to be kind of built. It's not bad. Not, not bad. For the blushes, let's start kind of subtle. Let's use this shimmer one right up here. Get some of that. Tap off the excess. Ooh, are you seeing the immediate dusty rose there? One that bit. The blushes, to me, are kind of the high point here. Like, they look pretty, and they sort of remind me of the softness and smoothness of what you get in like the bite size duos, okay? Really good stuff. And I liked this highlight here too. The lightest one there on the corner, really good. Not so thrilled with the bronzers and not so much seeing what this one's place is. Let me use some of that again over here. I can see the gentle sheen in this one, like it's really nice quality. I just wish the whole palette was as effective. Like I said, bronzers, I can make them work for me, but anybody too much darker than me at all, I think those would be a waste for them in this palette, which is sad. This one's pretty too, but it's going to be kind of on the same wavelength as this one, just not with the shimmer. This one has a little more color intensity, so let's just add some of that. Add a little pop. A little bit more. There we go. See the cheek difference? Mm -mm. I feel like they put out a bite-sized face duo, and I want to say the shade name was Cantaloupe, and I, it had a shade like that in there, and I thought, I'm, I don't know how I'm ever going to use that. It just doesn't show. Okay, I'm all blushed up. I'm more than blushed. Like I said, we got two highlights here. One is really kind of like goldeny. I would say for my skin tone, I would wear that almost like a light, shimmery, glowy bronze almost. But this is going to be what works as a highlight for me. So I'm going to take that right up here. It's soft. It's not too like glitter packed. It's just pretty. It's just a pretty luminous glow. You know what would have been amazing? I'm guessing it would have cost them more money to do this, but like a bite size face duo mega palette where they just boom, 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 put all the face duos or maybe like a top five face duos in a palette like this all together in their full size format. I mean, maybe it wouldn't have cost more because they wouldn't have had to reformulate or come up with a new product. Dig in the highlight. No problem at all with that. See, I feel good. I feel good about the way the face looks here. I feel defined enough. I feel blushed. I feel glowy. This gets to me a little bit, but you know, if I multitask this on the eyes, I could absolutely use that as an eyeshadow. So there's kind of maybe a silver lining here that could become an eyeshadow. But a overall downside is beware of this one if you are a tan, rich skin tone. I think there's going to be a lot in there that doesn't show. Hey, you know what? I don't have anything to use on my eyes specifically. I didn't go for their little um, eyeshadow palette, Celestial Winter 10-piece eyeshadow palette. I wasn't big into that color scheme. I didn't feel like there was enough depth or balance in it, so I just didn't buy it. But I could just do my brows real quick and then make an eye look out of this. Why not? Okay, we're back. Brows are done. I use my e.l.f. Ultra Precise and Wow Brow to set them a little bit. I'm almost out of my Wow Brow, so I didn't have quite enough. Um, I primed my lids, and then I'm going to just pop, let's see, let's do this bronzer shade, a little bit of that in the crease, just for a quick eye. You know, this is going to be quick and basic. But I could see a lot of people having this palette and you know, just wanting to throw the look together this way. So this is perfect for a little natural eye crease. It's not going to be too dark because, as we said, this palette's not very dark. I would prefer, you know, if you're going to bother to throw in two bronzers, let's make one 
quite a bit deeper. You know what I'm saying? A lighter skin tone can still make that work by applying lightly. A deeper skin tone can't get anything out of it, you know, when it's too, when it's all too light. Okay, building a little more after that initial go around. And then what did I say? We can make use of that oddball uh, apparent blush shade. We can throw that on the lid. Look at it. It's like just the most yellowy peach color you've ever seen. It does have some pigment, but if you're putting your brush in it and you're taking it to the cheeks and you're expecting to see some kind of a blushed look, it's not that. Does a whole room of people sign off on this? Or, Okay, <laughs> um, I'm going to take a little bit of the bronzer again now and maybe deepen a little bit of the outer part of that lid. I don't know. Okay, so just a light little, you know, barely their eye. You could work in blushes if you wanted a more rosy look, but just wanted to show you. All right, guys, we got some liner and mascara on there, and now we're ready to talk about the last element that I picked up from ELF's website, and it is a vault of sorts here. We've got the Jewel Box Glossy Lip Stain Set, and there are eight in here, and it looks like they are all full size, which is still pretty small. These are kind of a small product. Um, but they're full size and you're getting every shade that's part of the regular line. So if you're like nuts about these, this might be a good time to stock up. They are charging $35 for this full set and I think they normally retail for like $6 a piece. So prior to this set, I had a couple of these and there's kind of a sheer quality when you first put them on. But I noticed one of the deeper shades from this set that I was wearing yesterday, the berry one, like really lasted a long time. I was taking it off at the end of the day actually. But some of these shades I'm totally unfamiliar with. So I thought, you know, I'll just get on here. I'll try them on. We'll talk, chat about these colors. First one I'm going to put on is Pinkies Up. So they're only about this tall and um, you have a tiny window where you see the color. Other side says Elf. So I'm going to pop it on. This is looking like just a barely there kind of nude, cool nude. Honestly, a really pretty shade. I like the texture. It feels like it's going on your lips super duper thin and then you feel it just become a little bit more one with the lips. So there's pinkies up. I'm going to remove that before any kind of stain really sets in to interfere with the other shades. But can you see like it, it goes a little pinky. The giveaway there is looking at the applicator. You can see some pink on the applicator surrounding where um, that product is. So there is a staining element in these. Let's try Cinnamon Dreams. This one just looks kind of like brown through the window. Hmm, interesting. Oh my word. Really like interesting brown that's not like reddish at all. Again, going on feeling thin and wet and then you, it's like you mush your lips together and it feels a bit more one. There's that brown. When I first put it on, I didn't know what to think and now like kind of looking back at the whole face. I could see myself in that a lot, actually. As some color gets removed, think about it this way. That shine is going to wear off. You know, the shine is not what's lasting you all day. And you can see, like, <laughs> how it's coming off there. But what's left behind is some stained lips that don't necessarily turn out to be the exact same color as what you're putting on. And I think that's especially the case for some of these lighter shades. Let me know if you're a huge fan of this. Am I? Do I have these pegged pretty much? The stain that the darker shades leave is more accurate to that actual color and then these lighter ones are leaving stains that just seem different from what you think you see in the window. Different from what's first applied. Let's do Coral Cutie here. This one just looks kind of orangey or peachy orange. See the sheerness? Like you're not getting fully opaque color here but yet you can see the color. Goes on feeling thin. However, press your lips together and you're feeling that moisture. This really amounts to kind of a pumpkin-y looking shade. Very fall vibes. I mean, now suddenly, did, did anybody see the connection immediately to the eyeshadow shade that I used and how that's kind of making a little more sense with this lip? It's funny how these shades, some of them, like at first application, I'm like, I don't know, but then they, they do make sense. That one, I can see how it was leaving behind a little more orangey tone. And apparently the stain sets in pretty darn fast because I'm not leaving these on a long time at all. Here's where we're at. I just used what I thought were, you know, kind of like semi-light neutrals. I've got a couple of pinky shades coming and then I've got three what seem to be richer, more vibrant shades. So let's put on um, this one called Power Mauve. Okay, looks kind of like classic pink as far as the liquidy part that's on the applicator. 
It feels like one dip into the product can pretty much get all around your lips. Like you don't have to be dipping back for more. Mmm. I really do like the comfortable feel, and I was noticing that a lot yesterday when I was playing with the berry one. That's a pretty shade. I'm all about that kind of color. What does it look like if you just take a blot off just to mimic general wear down instead of trying to remove everything? Like, see? A lot of color getting left behind even as that moisture leaves the lips. This is a wet wipe that I've been using to take everything off, just to remove as much as possible. I have one called Basic Beige. I don't think I've put that one on yet, but it, it just looked like sort of pinky to me, I guess. Why did they name it Basic Beige? It's completely like rosy looking. Like a soft, ro dusty rose, kind of. But it's really wanting to stain my lips a little bit darker. I can see by what the applicator is revealing there. I know my lips had a little depth on them already, but for sure, basic beige. That ain't basic beige. Yeah, as I take that off, that's like a, a warm rose, I would say. Let's do a few shades that are a little more intense here. We have fiery red. Okay. Looking more of a, like a bright pink. It even looked that way through the little window where you can barely see the color. I thought that's like a hot pink. Would we call it maybe just a really pinky red? Which is pretty. I can enjoy that, but we're getting to some where the actual glossy part is really intensified, you know? And then let's test this with just a Kleenex. So just a light wear down of the shine. Still leaves behind a lot of color here. Two more to go. Um, we've got Spicy Sienna. Look at that one. That's looking like kind of a brick color. Let's see if it turns out that way on the lips. If you're looking to wear more of a true reddish shade, I'd say pull this one. It's a little bit deeper red, but I would say red nonetheless. Oh, that's pretty. And I'm not normally a fan of wearing my reds in a glossy finish like this because it just makes me feel a little too dangerous. Like is a lot of color gonna obviously slip outside my lips? But with a little wear, with a little, let's say eating, drinking, whatever, you do have something hanging on there you have some nice color that you really wouldn't have to worry about. Keep that in mind. And see, I left that one on my lips just a little bit longer. Look how that's hanging around. And it's also kind of the compounded effect of wearing eight stains at once. The last one is Berry Queen. So this one looks downright purpley through the window. Don't be scared off by this. These go on with a certain amount of sheerness, okay? See the sheer? It's gonna be so pretty. I love this. Everybody needs a nice winter berry like that. I put it on kind of midday. It was after I had lunch. Wore it through the afternoon and when I took my makeup off in the shower, I had one of my makeup removing cleansing cloths and I went purposely over my lips to see am I pulling color off still and I definitely was. So that was very long lasting. What are my favorite shades? If I had to pick favorites, I thought this was kind of unique. That Coral Cutie shade that I said looked kind of pumpkin-y, that was really unique, you know, and I, I like that. I like Power Mauve as kind of like a super everyday, works for anything type of shade. But the two that are honestly, I think the most beautiful on the lips, um, Spicy Sienna, the one that looked like a true kind of deep red, and then this Berry Queen one that I have on right now. Those are just stunning. So again, it's an eight piece set. All of these shades are part of the regular line and they're all the same size as what's regularly sold. They feel moisturizing on your lips. There's a thinness at first, so you're gonna feel like, mm, too thin, too light, too slippery. But as you wear them, as you have them on your lips for just a very short amount of time, you feel them become a bit more one with your lips, which I, that's a way I've described a lot of different glosses over my days here on YouTube. It's really true for these, and I think you're gonna notice more true to color staining out of the deeper shades, meaning the shade you see on your lips currently when it's all glossy, is gonna be the shade you continue to see as things wear down. But then some of these lighter shades are staining a little bit more like with a pink pull. So you may put on one of these lightest ones and be like, that's the nude color I want, but your stain is a little bit different. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of several of the e.l.f. holiday sets that interested me most. Um, there are still many more on their website. They've got a brush set or two, one that's pretty large, one that's um, a little bit smaller, like I said, an eyeshadow palette, a sponge, 
sponge set, a shadow stick set, a vault of the Diamond Darling liquid eyeshadows, and they also have a lip gloss vault as well. I'm sure these will also be out in stores fairly soon. So thanks for your time, everybody. I appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon. I love you. Bye.